Hello, so I thought I'd give you a quick tour of a tidal system as you've hopefully got installed by now. If not, um, then uh, give it a go and any error messages you get um, along the way, share it on the forum and we should be able to get you sorted out. Um, so I'll just give a bit of a tour, show you the different bits so you can see how it all fits together, hopefully. Um, the first thing is Atom, which is just like a, a general text editor. I like turning off the tree view um, so that got a nice clear thing. Um, uh, so I'm going to make a new file um, and then I'm going to save it. Um, when you save it, it has to end in .tidal. I'll just call it cycle0.tidal. Um, oh, just replace that, that's fine. Right, so, um, and you can see that it says tidal cycles in the bottom right. Um, that means that it knows it's a tidal file. We're ready to go. Um, so the first thing is write a little pattern. Um, and run it with control and enter. Um, so you can see it flash when I do that. Um, so that kind of worked. Um, I'll just stop that with a hash. Um, so you can see it's given me some information. It says listening for controls. If it says that, that basically means that it's running fine. Um, but then it started to say fail to send is the super target running. That means that I've forgotten to start super collider. So I'll do that now. There we go. Right, welcome to SuperCollider, it started up. Um, so now if I run this again, um, it should make a kick drum, but it hasn't because um, it's not coming out up that message anymore. SuperCollider's running. Um, it's receiving the messages from Tidal, but I haven't actually started SuperDirt. So Tidal is the pattern engine. This is the what you write. You're writing code that makes patterns, but Tidal doesn't make sound itself. It does that by sending messages to SuperCollider, um, which runs this SuperDirt thing, which is like a, um, basically a synthesizer. It's a sound making thing. Um, so you're making patterns here, sending them to here to turn into sound. Um, but I haven't started SuperDirt, so I can do that with SuperDirt.start. Um, there we go. There, and now it says listening to Tidal on port 57120. That's a good sign, and you can hear the kick drum. Um, a good thing is to click around on these numbers, and you get some more options like changing the volume might be useful, recording, pause recording, um, or show scope. That's a good thing to do. Um, if there's not sound coming out, um, then look at the scope. And if you can see that there's sound on the scope, then you know that there's maybe something's muted in your system or it's going to the wrong device. Um, so if it is going to the wrong device, then you'll probably be best changing it in your system settings, um, the default device, changing it there, and then restarting Super Collider, and hopefully it'll pick up the new device. When I say device, it might be trying to send it to your monitor instead of your headphones or something like that. Right, so that's running. Um, that's all good. Um, I'd like to talk a bit more about this. I'll send this hash again. Um, so here it said load boot title dot hs from this file. So let's have a look at that. If I just do file open file, paste that. Um, it's done it twice there. Right, this is the boot title. So this is what um, title boots up with. Most of it you don't have to worry about. Um, if you get lots of, um, if, if like the timing of your rhythms sound out and you might get some messages in SuperCollider about things being late, then this latency number might be one to change. Um, some people find that it works better at 0.2. Maybe if you've got quite an old computer, um, it means that Tidal might be a bit less responsive, but it will mean that the timing in, in the sound should be much better if you increase that. Normally it's fine just to leave it like that. Um, there might be some other things you want to change if you want to, instead of sending messages to SuperDirt, send it to something else, like if you have made visualization programming processing, then that's something we can look at later on in the course. Um, uh, it's worth maybe thinking about what uh, where Tidal is. So 
tidal is an inside atom when we're looking at the tidal cycles package and um, that's not actually um, tidal itself that's a um, a plugin for atom for communicating with tidal um, if we want to look at tidal we can actually run it separately from atom if we want so I'll bring up a terminal window this might look different this is Linux you might be using a Mac or Windows um, but if we go GHCI so this is actually what runs Tidal GHCI it's, it's the Glasgow Haskell compiler um, interpreter maybe um, and this is basically um, what Tidal runs in Tidal is a library for Haskell it's like embedded in the Haskell programming language Haskell's like a um, a general purpose programming language but um, you don't need to learn Haskell to learn Tidal um, you might be interested in looking at it but actually you can learn everything you need to just by learning Tidal um, so and if we actually took the contents of boot title.hs and pasted it in here um, then we could actually start sending um, sound from here so you don't actually need Atom running um, it just makes it massively easier if you've got all your code in a window here um, and can edit it and start and stop it it's uh, easier than just doing it on this command line um, but it's possible if you want to explore <laughs> um, this might be a useful thing um, if if you're not sure if something's not working you can just go to the terminal window type ghci and if that um, prompt doesn't come up that means haskell probably isn't installed um, on a mac you might need to do something like this um, uh, uh, because sometimes on a Mac the path isn't updated so you have to say explicitly where it is but normally you just have to run it like this um, if any of this is confusing just ask a question in the forum uh, right so um, I was also going to talk about this as well actually um, so in the installation instructions it'll probably tell you to run this to start SuperDirt um, but you don't have to do that, you can just paste that into the startup file under the file menu or whatever. Um, it might be different on a Mac. Um, and if you do that, then you won't have to run that by hand each time. Um, you can just, uh, it just means that it runs automatically. So if I now do super collider, um, it'll just start straight away with loading up there listening to tidal great um, and then without having to run start su uh, super start it'll just work um, another good thing to do is look at super dirt itself the code so if we open user support directory and then go to downloaded quarks you can see um, these are the add-ons for super collider and we've got super dirt there we've also got the samples here We'll look at that later in the course. But these are all the samples that come with Tidal. Um, and here is um, SuperDirt. So there's some good stuff in here you can explore. The hacks folder has some interesting things. Um, but what I want to look at is this file here, SuperDirt underscore startup dot scd. So this is um, an alternative way of starting SuperDirt. Normally, when you're starting, you'll just be completely fine with um, this superdirt.start thing. Um, that's usually fine, but I've just copied the contents of that um, startup file and I'm going to paste it in here. And this actually should be run instead of this. You don't run both, otherwise you'll end up with two copies of superdirt. This is an alternative way of running superdirt. So I've taken this superdirt. Um, underscore startup.scd copied the contents into my startup file which I find via open startup file here um, so um, what I can do now is shut super glider and start it again and it should still all start up fine yeah um, listening to title ray Right, so if I go to that startup file, let's just explain what the difference is. There's just more options, basically. So if you want to add more samples to SuperDirt, then um, you might find if you add two loads, then you start running out of buffers. 
and um, there'll be a message saying something to that effect and you can just increase that you might just multiply it by two for example and it also it might say something about running out of too many nodes or running out of memory alloc failed then you might have to increase these these are ways of tweaking things so just giving supercloud more resources there's also stuff about um, changing the number of channels so that's if you instead of doing stereo if you've got lots of speakers you might want to do multi-channel sound and um, we can talk about that later as well or load different sound file libraries um, uh, we'll go through that definitely in the next uh, in the next session I think um, in the first week okay so just to recap um, we've got Atom which is starting Tidal sending code to it um, Tidal is the pattern um, uh, library, the pattern engine, which is then sending messages to SuperCollider to make sound. Um, and that is the full um, system. Uh, I've just shown you some quick configuration things, but normally you'll just be completely fine with the defaults. But maybe in the future, you'll bookmark that and go back if something goes wrong, you want to change something. OK, uh, so I think I'll leave it at that. Um, thanks for listening and uh, yeah, get settled into the forum, ask lots of questions and see you soon.